interested in teaching in the Bible school department should notify either Brother Copeland or Brother Weathers prior to the beginning of the class. Class will start on March the 20th and will meet in the old fellowship hall during the Bible school hour. This comes from Brother Copeland and Brother Oliver. Simply grateful. We thank you all for the cards and sympathy that was sent to, to us during the homegoing of our brother, Cornelius A. Frazier. Also, we thank you for the plant and prayers for people like you from Mrs. Fern L.W. Jennings and family. Let us not forget the Reb, Reb, webinar series. Webinar series, we still believe. This takes place every fourth Thursday of the month, now through October the 27th at 8 o'clock p.m. Please see flyer located on the bulletin board for Zoom meeting ID and passcode. The Zoom information will also be sent via email. This concludes our morning announcements. Ushers, you may let those in the foyer in. Today's invocation is taken from Revelation chapter 19. I'll be reading from verse 15 and 16. That's Revelation chapter 19, verse 15 and 16. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your house one more time. When the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall arise, and the splendors immortal shall envelop the skies when the angel of death shall no longer destroy and the dead shall awaken in the morning yes in the morning of joy in the morning of joy we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy in the morning of joy in the morning of joy, and we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy. When the king shall appear in his beauty on high, and shall summon his children to the courts of the sky, shall the cause of the Lord have been all your employ, that your soul may be spotless in the morning. Oh, in the morning, yes, in the morning of joy, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy. Oh, the bliss of that morn when the safe one we meet, when the songs of the ransom we each other shall greet, singing praise to the Lamb through eternity years when the past are forgotten with this sorrow. 
Oh, in the morning of joy, oh, in the morning of joy, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning. Yes, in the morning. Oh, in the morning of joy, well, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning. Oh, in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, well, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning. Oh, yes, in the morning of joy, in the morning. Well, we'll be gathered to glory in the morning of joy. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 202. Anywhere is home. Earthly wealth and fame may never come to me. And a path, a palace path. Here man may heaven be, but let come, come what may, if Christ for me does again, anywhere is home, if he is only there, anywhere is home, yes, let come, come and go what may. Anywhere I roam, he keeps me all the way. And so for his, his dear sake, my cross I meekly bear. Anywhere his home, him a Christ my Lord is there. Well, often talk. Tossed about, oh, and driven by the foe, and sat within, sat without, wherever I may go. But I press, I press along, yes, still looking up in prayer for his home, home, sweet home. If a Christ is only a there, anywhere it is home, oh, let come, come and go, what may, what I may, anywhere I roam, yes, he keeps me all the way, so for his, his dear sake, yes, my cross. I meekly bear anywhere there is home. In Christ, my Lord is there. Well, I will labor, I labor on till I am called away to hear the morning shall dawn over oh, that eternal day. Looking up unto him who keeps me in his care. Anywhere there is home, in the Christ my Lord is there. Anywhere is home, oh, let come, come and go. Keep me all the way. So for his, his dear sake, yes, my cross I meekly bear. Anywhere is home, in Christ my Lord is there. Our scripture text for the morning can be found in Mark chapter 10. Verses are 29 and 30. That's Mark chapter 10. Verses are 29 and 30. And Jesus answering said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospels, 
but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life. May the Lord bless the reading of these said verses. Our responsive reading for this morning has been taken from Mark chapter 2, verses 22 through 27. Again, that's Mark chapter 2, verses 22 through 27. I'll read the part of the reader, you'll read the part of the church, and we will come together to read unison and prayer. And no man put us new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Father in heaven, we pray that you will bless us to know and to appreciate what you have provided for our blessings and benefit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would we all stand and prepare ourselves for prayer? Tempted and tried, we will all me to wonder why it should be the all day long. Well, while there are there is a living about. Us never more let us did well, though in the wrong, Father alone, yes, we'll know our Father alone, we will understand why. So cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine, for we'll understand, yes, we will, oh, all by and by. Shall we bow together? Dear loving and merciful Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Father, that you have blessed us together here today. We're thankful, Father, for all that you continue to do in our lives and the lives of like-minded believers. Father, we ask you again to forgive us of those things that we have thought and considered that are contrary to your will. Forgive us of those things, Father, that we have said and done, Father, that are contrary to your holy way. And we ask you, Father, forgive us of those things that we have not done that we should have done. Father, we pray now, Father, for the entire body of Christ. And Father, we pray again a special prayer this hour, Father, for our brothers and sisters that are in harm's way in the Ukraine area. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would keep them with a special keeping that only you can give. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, also 
that you would end that conflict there. And not only the conflict there, but Father, the conflict that goes on around the world that are hurting the lives of men and women, Father. And stopping, Father, their progress in where they are, even at this present time. And Father, we are mindful as you have blessed us to come together here on this last uh, day of the month for the last Lord's Day. We're mindful, Father, that we are coming together here to celebrate, dear Heavenly Father, uh, African American heritage, to celebrate Black History Week. Yes. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for keeping us as a people all these many years. Yes. We're thankful, Father, for the contribution that we have made to all humanity. And we're thankful, Father, for the contribution, Father, that we have made and that you have used us in the kingdom of Christ. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would continue to, to use us. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, also that you would continue to alleviate the suffering, Father, of your people and especially black people here in America and abroad. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, a special prayer, Father, for the men and women that meet here at Carver Road. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be the light that you would have us to be in the community. We're mindful, dear Heavenly Father, of those that are going through anxiety at this time, whether it's financial anxiety, dear Heavenly Father, whether it is family anxiety, whether it is mental or physical anxiety. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would comfort them even now. We pray again, Father, for those that have come back into the workforce, that you would continue to bless them and to bless their efforts. And Father, we are mindful that as we continue to call back our brothers and sisters to the great assembly, yes. we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that all that are going through anxiety and coming back, that you would alleviate that anxiety and allow them to know, Father, that you have called us together for a purpose and a plan. Yes. And, and we pray, Father, that you would give them and us the strength, Father, to walk yes. in that purpose and plan. And we pray to Heavenly Father again for those that are sick. We ask again that you touch and heal their body as only you can. And we pray again, Father, for those that are even here this hour, mourning the loss of loved ones. Yes. We ask that you would give them a special comfort of healing, Father, knowing that you are there and that you will always be there and that you will comfort them, Father, in their very hour of distress in those times that are coming. Yes. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, also for your manservant and a special prayer, Father, for your manservant that labors here, Brother Carruthers. Yes. Father, we thank you for his diligence. We thank you, Father, for using him in the kingdom. And we pray now, Father, that you would continue to bless his word ministry, continue to bless his family, yes. and continue to bless the men and women that are committed to working together for yes. kingdom living and yes. kingdom accomplishment here at Carver Road. Yes. And we pray again, dear Heavenly Father, for our young people as they continue to navigate through this coronavirus. Yes. We pray again that you continue to keep them in the schools, keep them, dear Heavenly Father, in their different communications one with another. Yes. And Father, we also pray a special prayer, dear Heavenly Father, for our nation, Father. Yes. We ask you again, Father, to help stay the mouths of those that are against the accomplishment of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that you would, Father, allow them, dear Heavenly Father, for not only their miles to be stopped, but we pray, Father, for the programs in which they enlist and hope to enlist. We're thankful, dear Heavenly Father, for Joe Biden having the courage to nominate a black woman for the Supreme Court. We're thankful, dear Heavenly Father, that you uh, allowed her life to be of such that she can be considered. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that just as black women has been the strength and, and the hope for black families here, we just pray again that you continue to bless our women to be supportive, dear Heavenly Father, of their men and to 
supportive of their families. And we thank you, Father, for the accomplishments that they continue to commit to and be a part of. But we also ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that you would bless us also as black men to also continue to step forward, to be leaders in the church, to step forward, to be leaders in our family, and allow us, dear Heavenly Father, to grow stronger and to be all that you would have us to be in mankind and to mankind. We pray to Heavenly Father again, a special prayer, Father, that you would bless each and every family that is here this day, continue to keep them, continue to strengthen them. And again, Father, we just thank you that things are as well with us as they are, that you continue to keep a roof over our heads, that you continue to provide substance in our homes, and that you continue to bless us to see another day on this time side of life. And we pray now that you would make ready our hearts to receive your word, allow us to understand it, and bless us, dear Heavenly Father, to allow your word to continue to transform us into that which you would have us to be. Yeah. We thank you again for your love, your mercy, and your kindness. Yeah. And now we ask you again to bless us individually, but bless us collectively as a church to do your will and do it your way. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Shelter in the time of storm. The Lord our rock, in him we hide. He's a shelter in the time of the storm. Secure whatever will be tight. He's my shelter in the time of the storm. Don't you know that my Jesus is a rock in a weary land? A weary land, oh, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is my rock in a weary land, cause he's my shelter in the time of the storm. Oh, a shade by day, bends by night, he's my shelter in the time of the storm. No fear along the bowls of fright, he's my shelter in the time of the storm. Don't you know that my Jesus is a rock in a weary land? Oh, yes, a weary land. Oh, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is my rock in a weary land. He's my shelter in the time of the storm. Oh, rock and divine, oh, refuge deep. He's my shelter in the time of the storm. Be thou my Ever, ever live, he's my shelter in the time. Um, don't you know that my Jesus is a rock in the weary? Oh, a weary, oh, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is my rock in the weary. He's my shelter. Oh, don't you know that my Jesus is a rock in the weary land? Yes, a weary land, oh, a weary land, oh, Jesus is my rock, in a weary land, he's my shelter, oh, don't you know my Jesus is a rock, in a weary land, oh, a weary, yes, yes, a weary land, oh, Jesus is my rock, He's a shelter in the time of the storm. 
Amen. Let the whole church say amen. amen. The whole church say glory, glory. and hallelujah. hallelujah. And we, again, thankful to God for blessing us uh, this day to come out to the worship service and be a part of everything that's going on to glorify uh, God. And we're thankful of all of you who have joined in, lifting up your voices in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We're thankful, too, for the meditative moments that we've had in the Word of God as well as the prayers and supplications and intercessions that have been made in behalf of humanity and especially in behalf of the church. We're thankful for this uh, fourth Sunday of the month of February. Time just keeps passing on and we're thankful that, that God allows us to enjoy uh, these moments and these days uh, on top side of earth and in this present existence with family and friends, and I'm saying this morning, all of us ought to be thankful to good God for how good God has been to us. I want to say to any who are guests on today, we're thankful, happy that you stopped by this way for a few moments uh, to give God glory, honor, and praise. And we say often in churches of Christ that uh, God is recognized as Father, Jesus Christ is His Son. The, uh, Holy Spirit is a comforter who fills and seals the church is the body of Christ. It's the pillar and ground of truth made up of baptized believers gifted by the Holy Spirit to minister to one another and to fulfill the great commission of going into all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature, fully trusting that honest men and honest women, once hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, would obey the very same. It's incumbent upon us, though, as the children of God, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to say something to somebody about how good God has been, how good God, good God is, and how good God will be. And to say it unabashedly, say it without shame. Say it as if you're proud to be a child of God. Y'all all right this morning? You're not ashamed to be a child of God. And it's good to see those of you who are, who are dressed in um, uh, continental garb, and, uh, the uh, African-American traditional uh, continental uh, clothing. Uh, amen. And we just pray that everybody be all right. Don't y'all get to dance around on the rocks and things of that nature. That's, I know they were playing with, uh, with that, but yes, we, we're thankful that the gift of the continent uh, is with us here on this morning. In a few minutes, we'll be recognizing our meal that God blesses us with and recognizing Sister Thompson, who through the years has worked with this uh, program, and we're thankful uh, for this opportunity. I want to say to any who were at our 8 o'clock worship, you've gone home now to get a little rest, come on back at 12 o'clock and uh, be with us for this, uh, for this recognition uh, on, on today. Uh, just just uh, encouraging one another uh, while we can. Amen. Encouraging one another. And, and all of us can use some encouragement every once in a while. Say something good about uh, somebody every once in a while. Don't tell people things that, uh, you got to know how to say it, I'm saying. You don't say to folk, you're not as ugly as you used to be. You say, you're looking good these days. God's really blessing you. You're getting better and better, right? Just know how to say it and uh, encourage the uh, children of God. I'm excited that it's the year 2022 and looking forward to what God will continue to do in Brother Jones's prayer, he has made mention of, of what's going on, of course, in Ukraine, but he also noted that uh, there's still things going on all over the, all over the globe. Uh, and of course, sometimes when it happens to those that appear to be European countries, it gets more press than, than at other times, but children and families are, and this is not to lessen the effect of what's going on, but children and families are still suffering in Afghanistan and children and families are still suffering on the continent of Africa and all over the world. And it's incumbent upon us to remain in prayer for, for everybody. Now, there's some amazing stories that are coming out. You may have seen them on MSNBC or CNN or one or two of the other uh, places uh, about um, who has to stay in the country and who does not uh, in this time of of conflict and and it was amazing to me thinking about what our cultural priorities appear to be when we have peace times that that uh, President Zelensky had uh, advised 
that everybody between 18 and 60, not everybody, but, but the men, uh, through 18, 18 through 60, you couldn't leave. You, you couldn't leave. You had to be there. Uh, now, he did not say that the ladies could not be there, and there are many ladies who, who said they're going to stay there and fight. Stay there and fight for the homeland. They're not, not, not going to leave, even at the cost of death. It reminded me that uh, even during the days of King, he said that if you haven't really learned how to live until you have found something to die for, something to die for, and, and they are willing to say that they would die. Now, 18 to 60 men, he said, you must stay. And I didn't hear anybody saying, this is not right. This is not women's right. We're not being treated fairly. We're not being treated equally. My wife said to me, I'm gone. She said, I'll be gone. <laughs> I'm going to stay right around and talk about, I think the women ought to stay too, give us equal rights. No, the ladies got on the train and got gone. And I want you to understand, things get different when they get serious. And all that stuff we talk about, equal, and everybody does the same thing. And all that goes away and dissipates when you get down to the nitty gritty. You get down to the nitty gritty, but and, and but uh, I, I was thinking about that. If, if that were going on in this country, eighteen to sixty, I can see Javar now with a helmet on. Can't you? I can see Taj Mel with a helmet on and carrying his gun upside down, but he got it. Hey man, Curry have his helmet on, but it'd be crooked. You know, it's yeah, they said some of them said some of the men over sixty said they wanted to stay too. Said they wanted to stay there. I can see Brother Copeland saying, "I'm not leaving. I'm going to fight." I, Jessup said, "That's my buddy. I'm gonna fight right next to him." Right, Brother Jessup. Right? And, and folk who who never handled a gun before, they they were being handled uh, AK-47s, and and they said, "I'm going. I may not." And and it was amazing that the ladies and the men and the ten, uh, teens were at home making Molotov cocktails. I said, "We don't have to learn in the hood. We already know how to." Do it. <laughs> but let, let's just pray. It's a very serious time, and people are losing their lives. They're losing their lives because of man's inhumanity to man. And we need God, and uh, we need to teach God, and we need to preach God because there is some evil that goes on in this world just for the acquisition of property, land, and advantage. Men will kill their neighbors and cause children to suffer. My heart aches when I see the children suffering the anxiety and the angst not knowing what's going on with mama and daddy and getting on trains and asking questions and and parents can't really answer those questions but we'll do that to each other and the sad part about it is that the one institution that God has given to give people a godly alternative oftentimes fails in his task to be a city set on a hill a lamp on a lampstand to be the light of this world. But that's what our calling is. Let me read from Mark chapter uh, 10, verses 29 through 30. Mark chapter 10, verses 29 through 30. The Bible reads, And Jesus answering said, Verily I, I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, a mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. I want to lift that phrase from these verses a hundredfold now in this time, and perhaps just as a memory uh, technique, you, you just think in terms of a hundredfold, a hundredfold. And, and, and what's happening when we think about a hundredfold? Some weeks ago, we were entertaining the thought of what makes church attractive to people. What makes people come out where... Prayers and supplication are being made, and we have 
underscored that there are many people who come to service as long as it is entertaining and they want to see the lights, they want to see the dark, they want to see uh, the instrument players, they want to hear entertaining music and they want to hear a particular type of message. That message, I said, was the message of the gospel of prosperity. It's called, in other places, a health, well, wealth, and wholeness doctrine. A lot of people actually come to religious settings hoping that they, once they make a commitment, they will never get sick again. They will never have mental anguish again. And that they will never have any financial problems. Health, wealth, and wholeness kind of doctrine. And I have preached, I have suggested that that's not really the story that Jesus wishes to communicate. And that is that as much as God will bless us, from time to time we will be sick, right? From time to time we, we, we feel like we, we're t taking on more than we can bear mentally. And from time to time our, our, our week will be longer than our money. Amen. But you still hold on to God. Whenever there are difficult times, you hold on to God. And even in this passage here, Jesus talks about a hundredfold more now in this time that a person will receive. But he says, with persecutions. And the child of God is admirable to the world because whatever comes his way, whatever comes her way, that child of God determines I'm going to hold on to God anyhow. Amen, somebody. Let come and go what may. God is going to be number one on my list. The day can't get dark enough. The weather can't get cold enough. The flood can't get high enough. The difficulty can't get rugged enough for me not to put God as number one. God must always be first and is always first. In the life of a child of God. If I don't do anything else. I, I tell myself I'm going to serve the Lord. I may not get to everything else. But I'm going to give God his. He's going to get the glory. And I'm never, I'm never going to be more committed to anything. Than I am to the purpose, will and mission of God. We've been preaching that these last two years or so especially as we found ourselves challenged with uh, sickness and illness and health and I have been telling people for the last several months that if you want to be safe on a Sunday morning the best place to be in Winston-Salem is at 4399 Carper School Road oh yes yes never Never been a safer place for a person to be. We were talking about this this past Thursday at the preacher's meeting, and I, I, I made sure I, I reiterated it again. Put your trust in God and see what God will do. Yeah, and I reminded people there's just no way that everything else can be safe and the worship assembly of the Lord dangerous. And uh, I was saying at the 8 o'clock, the class this morning or worship this morning, people, people are flying, people are going to restaurants, people are uh, going out of town, people have been doing some of everything. But when it comes to the assembly, that's dangerous. I don't believe it. God, I said God, God is in this place. God is with his people. I, I, I'm not, not going to let the the Rams fan outshout me about God. I'm not going to let the basketball fans give coaches and ownership glory and I not give God glory. I'm not going to talk about how proud I am of the companies that have risen to the occasion and not give Jesus his praise God for what he's done among the people of God. I, I, I didn't say folk didn't get sick. But I didn't say folk didn't get sick. I said they didn't get sick here. Amen, somebody avoiding here and getting sick somewhere else that ain't nothing but God yeah God 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 will do that and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna brag on God and what God God can do and I'm gonna tell you something else I ain't ashamed I'm not ashamed 
I'm, bo I'm bodacious. I'm bold with it. Because God needs to be glorified in this present world. We're praising everything else and acting like God can't keep people safe. You know, you, amen. They used to tell us that little boys on the playground, talk what you know. Uh, amen. You know the rest. And hundredfold now in this time. Jesus came to earth and lived among us. He, he blessed the lives of men and women among whom he lived, worked, and eventually died. But he also forever blessed all who will ever live on earth. And on earth is where we learn to enjoy life as Jesus did. Now you may have missed that. But I'm making this statement this morning. It's on earth where we learn to enjoy life as Jesus did. Jesus did not live a long life by any standard. I've said often of living. He was on earth only 33 years. But we are mistaken if we believe that he left earth in a hurry because life in the here and now was deplorable and not worth living. Quite to the contrary, Jesus came to demonstrate that meaning, purpose, joy, happiness, blessings, and love are all available to men and women who learn to live on earth with godly understanding of the heavenly realm. It is most important that the children of God always remember that we are blessed with the incomparable blessing of knowing how to live life to the fullest in abundance in the most meaningful and purposeful way ever to be demonstrated to humanity. I said there, we are blessed. Y'all didn't hear me? I said, we are blessed. We are the blessed people. We, we're not like everybody else. God has smiled on us. We are blessed as children of God. We're not down. We're, we're not sorrowful. We're not about to give up because we are blessed as the children of God. Somebody ought to give God some praise. We, we're blessed. It's not every entity and every institution and everything going on outside the church where all the joy in life is. We are blessed as members of the body of Christ. Jesus came to this earth to demonstrate to us how to live as children of God and to enjoy life on the time side of life. Ours is not to rush men and women from the sphere of life in the present to a nebulous and uncertain life in the future. Ours is to manifest before others how to live God's original intent for men and women on this blessed earth. Believers understand and teach that the ways of Christianity are not those that rob men, women, boys, and girls of the peace they seek. Faith is not about rejecting the obvious beauty to be enjoyed while having life or living life on earth. Faith is not to make men and women ashamed of all at the grandeur and majesty of what we behold in nature. Faith does not usher one into hermit status, separated from meaningful relationships with others, even family. Faith is not about wishful thinking and inactive living, hopeful of a better place that cannot challenge us to live in this place. I'm saying we ought to learn to enjoy God right now. We, we, we ought to tell folk what it is to, to be a child of God right now. Yeah, we, we ought to be able to spread the message here and far that God is good and very good to us. I want you to know, as I say often, I'm not among those. You're not going to grunt up on me and ask me, did you hate going to church all the time? No, I did not. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you, I'm not going to join your put down the church party, your, your pity party about having to come to church. I was at church all the time. That's why I don't, I don't go now. No, that's not why you don't go now. You don't go now because you're full of the devil. Y'all stop lying on God. Stop acting like God wasn't good to you when you were an infant. Good to you when you were a toddler. Good to you when you were a junior. Good to you when you were a teenager. God's been good to every one of us every day of our lives. Did you hate going to Sunday school? No, I look forward to it. I turn this stuff around. And I did look forward to it. Oh, I get to go to Sunday school. Not I don't want to go 
That may have been your experience, but your experience was not mine. I'm letting you know right now, some folk did enjoy going to Sunday school. Didn't you hate being in church all day long? No, we had a good time. Right? No, you, you're not getting that from me. You're going to have to go to the next grumpy person to get that. <laughs> Didn't y'all hate gospel meetings? Didn't it just keep you from all the fun? You need to understand the fun was being a child of God. That's where the fun was. I wasn't looking to be like everybody else anyway. I wanted to please God Almighty. Yeah, you have to talk to folk like it means something to be a child of God. And make sure you're telling the truth, though. Now, if all that was bad on you, thank God you made it this far by faith, or however you made it, and learn to give him glory. And I'm saying we just don't brag on God enough. That's why folk are running around here feeling like they got the victory, not serving God. He says, well, I know y'all having a lot of fun, but I got to go on to church. I'll see y'all later. No. Y'all having fun, but I'm about to have a better time. I'm going to be with brothers and sisters in Christ. Come on, Cole, go with me. Come on, learn something about God. Come on and go with me. I said this morning, we, we're not even ashamed to tell folk we don't like to be at church. Well, I'm going to go by and do my time, but if they get long, I'll be gone. <laughs> Amen. If, if we come to church, we get out of here so fast these days, it's like we're in the matrix. We're not, long enough. we're not here long enough to focus. They even know we're here. We, 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 we jump up out of here like this is the worst place. I'm going to tell some church members right now. Stop telling everybody how you love the Lord and you can't stand to be in church for 45 minutes and you got the scared out of this parking lot. I thought you said you love the Lord. I said I love the Lord. Well, if you love the Lord, you love the church. Where y'all getting all this from? All this false teaching and false doctrine out here. I'm going to tell you something else. Listen. Folk who love God, y'all ready for this? Give God their best. <laughs> they give God <laughs> their best. <laughs> Put forth all their effort doing some of everything else, and then when it comes to church, God gets the leftover. God is number one. And he needs to be treated like number one. Amen. And, 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 and nobody, can, nobody can hold a candle, a light, a torch to God. Nobody's on his level. That's why we enjoy being children of God. The message of Jesus to the infirmed, sick, crippled, halt, blind, deaf, diseased, poor, hungry, thirsty, in prison, despised, and rejected was not that he would make it all better when his disciples got to heaven. Jesus changed situations, circumstances, lots in life, then at that time, and in their present, and in his. Here's a, this is not Jesus' message. You're blind now, and when you get to heaven, you can see. Or you're deaf now, and when you get to heaven you can hear no Jesus gave sight to the blind while he was on earth hearing to the deaf while he was on earth food to the hungry while he was on earth the children of God can benefit greatly by understanding that the joys of association and fellowship with the maker while being in Christ did not begin with the blessings one would receive after a while rather Blessings from association with God began on earth. I'm saying you ought to feel blessed right now. You ought to know you are blessed right now. The people of Israel served God knowing what he was doing for them in this life. Yes, we believe in an afterlife. But we also live a present life. And we don't live to the glory of God when we get to the afterlife. We live to the glory of God right now in this life. Moses encouraged those whom he led out of Egypt to remember from which God had brought them and to where God was bringing them. They were to remember these things, especially as they enjoyed an uh, undeserved and unearned blessings in their, in their lifetimes. And all of us 
have blessings that we didn't deserve. All of us have things that we didn't work for. God just gave us those things. So the Bible reads in Deuteronomy 6 and verse number 10, And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which you build not. Continuing, notice that the promises of a promised land in the earthly realm. Moses continues, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digs which thou diggest not, uh, vineyards uh, and olive trees which you planted not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Deuteronomy 6 and 11, I'm saying God was blessing them in this life but don't mistake that when Jesus came he did not also teach that God is blessing in this life we are to live like we're blessed as church as Christians as Christians not want to be Christians but as real Christians we ought to think it's a joy to live a holy life a sanctified life a life that glorifies God you see, see, can I tell you something? We are not trying to be like the world, though we live in the world. We are trying to show the world how to live to the glory of God. And, and, and y'all know this, y'all studying the book of uh, Judges right now? You studied in the Old Testament as well. Israel's ongoing problem was as much as God tried to make them distinctive. They wanted to be like everybody else. They had the one true God, but wanted to serve the fake gods. Isn't that amazing? They had the true worship, but they wanted to worship like the folk that worship Baal. They had a God who had shown them the way, but they wanted to worship like folk who had a God who couldn't show them anything. And you ought to hear some echoes of what's going on with the Church of Christ today. The constant battle is for us to remember that we are distinguished not by us, but by what, what God teaches us to do to please him. And our constant battle is trying to be like everybody else. We want to be like all the other churches, look like all the other churches, sound like all the other churches. And we've gotten to a point, we're so bold in the church of Christ now, we don't care if it's in the Bible or not. So long as we look like everybody else. And the constant refrain, a constant refrain in the Bible is, listen, you all are not like everybody else. You have a God who has shown you the way. However God and wherever God has shown you to go, that ought to be pleasing enough for you. We had to ask him, well, why does... Why do, why do they do like they do and we don't? Well, Jesus had to come, uh, answer those questions in his day. They come to Jesus, why do the disciples of, of the Pharisees fast and the disciples of, of John fast and your disciples fast not? What they're saying is, why aren't they like everybody else? And in that passage that was read this morning in the scripture, Jesus is answering that same question. He said, you don't, you don't put new wine in old bottles. Anybody of y'all got some experience with wine? Put your hand down, I'm saying You say, you don't, you don't put new wine in old bottles. You don't put new cloth with old cloth. What they're saying is, we're not trying to be like everything else you did. Yes. We're trying to show you what heaven wants. And if the church of Christ could just learn that in this day, it would find itself being effective. Do you not know, and, and I bring this up often, with all the things that we're doing, trying to be like everybody else, it would seem like some church would start growing exponentially. And we're not growing oftentimes. In many places, we're getting smaller. And I say something else. It's, it's difficult when you don't have a historical mind because if you look at history, what we're trying to do, other folk already tried to do, and it didn't help them. You think folk just now started getting concerts in their churches they have concerts and get togethers in the church when my granddaddy was preaching in, in East Texas as a Baptist preacher they didn't just start the, and they stayed at 40 and 60 members and we're saying today we just look like everybody else we'll grow no we won't 
We'll do like everybody else. We'll look like we are the invention of mankind. Amen. So when we could show people the difference, people would come and the church would grow. Now we're trying to say that we're just like y'all. And they say, well, why should I, I leave where I am if you're just like I am? And why should we come to you? Y'all just like us. And then we try to turn around and say, but yeah, yeah, but we, no. no. Y'all trying to look like us. And, 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 and I'm going to get off of this. That's the reason that a greater effort has been made in training up preachers in the church. I'm talking about preachers whose first commitment is not popularity. Their first commitment is the word of God. And they don't care what people say. They're going to preach the truth. Folk, I have you cussing God and telling you you're preaching well. That's the trouble with a lot of religious contexts. We just don't read the Bible. Our preachers are not preaching. Our elders are not eldering. Our deacons are not deaconing. Our members are not memorizing. We're going to have to let the Bible be our standard. We're different. I told the 8 o'clock people, sometimes when you try to live different, folk will let you know when you're not living up to what you said you are. I've never been a, a cursor of profanity. No, you don't cuss. You, you. I didn't do the Bernie Mac stuff. And, and, and the thing about it, my friends knew it. And I told this story before I told the 8 o'clock. And I learned, you know, I was baptized in 1969. And uh, a couple of years after that, I was out playing basketball in Santa Ana, California with a group of guys. We were on the basketball court, young boys, 11 and 12 years old. Brother Jesse, we were out there. And there's one, one guy, he had, the, back in those days, you wore that little white thing when you played basketball and the socks and, and all that. And he, he, he was good. He, he was Allen Iverson before Allen Iverson was even born. I mean, he was dribbling around all the other boys on the court, shooting, layups. It didn't matter. Uh, elbow, it didn't matter. Wherever he shot, he dribbled. Whatever he did, he was good. He was very good. And uh, we were out there playing, and the other guys didn't know him that, I guess, who got on the court that day. And they didn't know what kind of guy this little white guy was. And some of the boys started cussing. You know, cussing. Curse words. The curse words are, are usually followed by, words, uh, followed by words like, if you don't get your, uh, or you so and so and so, uh, I'll beat your... He didn't cuss. Another voice started cussing. But I want you to know the power of an example. This is what children of God have to remember. We're not like everybody else. We're not trying to use their language. We're not trying to use their dress. We're not trying to go like they go. We're not even trying to dance like they dance. The preacher was telling me a few weeks ago he went to a wedding. He said it was his daughter's wedding. He said he was so ashamed he had to leave out. He said he didn't know they were going to play that kind of music. Is the kind of music where you get to go in and the, and the girls put their hands on their knees. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> you know, everybody cut. And see, you know, <laughs> we don't do like everybody else does. The children of God, say amen when you can. <laughs> but the guy, guy cussing. This is what the guy said. He said, that the folk around you want to do right. That's some power right there. That's some influence. Roll the clock for a couple of years later. We were living in Irvine, California, out of Santa Ana, Irvine. And I was at recess with my boys. You know, and middle school boys hang out. It seemed like all they do is just laugh continually. <laughs> and everybody was cussing, having a good time. And I was sitting down there and I, I said, well, I guess I better get to cussing too. This was a different group of boys. I want to fit in. Fit in. 
Everybody cussing and you want to fit in. What do you need to do? You cuss too. So I, I, don't, I don't remember what I said, but I, I tried it anyway. I said something. I, don't, I, I can't remember. I, I got so ashamed because my friend sitting next to me, he said, Jeff, don't even try it. You ain't even doing it right. You know how the people be cussing, they don't put their words in the right order. <laughs> I must have put them in the wrong order that day. I, I forgot one word before the other. And what he was saying to me is, we know you by who you are. And you don't have to be like us to be with us. As a matter of fact, we appreciate you being different from us. And we grew up with that mentality in the church that when I was growing up, we, we didn't want to go where everybody else went, party where everybody else party, do like every, drink what everybody else drank. But something got dropped in the churches of Christ. I, I don't know who, who manifested it first. I don't know if it was the young adults or the adults, but we have forgotten people in churches of Christ. We are not like everybody else. We are a city set on a hill with the light of this world. We show other folk how to live to the glory of God. We're not sleeping with boyfriends and girlfriends and shacking and doing like they do. We want to live to the glory of God. Somebody Somebody say amen when you can. And that's supposed to be our posture. And it's supposed to be a stronger posture than that young lady I saw sweeping glass in her window frame saying, I'm not leaving. I'm going to fight for my country. I'm going to fight for my country. Children of God are called to make a stand. Well, I know... You hear Brother Curry oftentimes saying that when I'm coaching, I'm cussing. He just has bad hearing. <laughs> we all have our issues, but we ought to learn to stand up for what God calls us to do. I tell my children, go out with a company, they're drinking. You don't have to drink because everybody else is drinking. Water, water root beer I went to one of my children's house I opened a refrigerator and he had a can in there that said not your daddy's root beer <laughs> I said so and so wh 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 whose root beer is this <laughs> you know our children they feel like you know at a certain age you feel like you got to, you got to fit in you can make it without fitting in hey man I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the drinking discussion. I'm just saying you don't have to do like everybody else does to enjoy life. Moses said, when you get all of these blessings from God, then beware lest you forget the Lord which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Deuteronomy 6 and 12. There is equally danger for those who associate faith in Jesus with blessings in the after while only. What can, ha can happen is that God will be removed and not credited for present blessings, blessings in this life. And I'll say again, everything you have is a blessing from God. And you're not necessarily blessed because you're good, because God allows it to rain on the just and the unjust. You're blessed because God is good. And I'll tell you, Folk who learn to live different from the world, those are the ones who eventually bless the church because they learn to put God first. My job couldn't make me do stuff on the first day of the week. My job used to offer me money, to, more money to work on the first day of the week. No, keep your money. I'm going to church. That, that's what they used to teach us. Put God first. Put his church first and I always made sure when I was on the job I, I had to be among the top employees had to be show up on time stay late do whatever I had to do because what I wanted to do is when they came to me I wanted to have a God talk with them and say to them you see how I work I do that because I'm a child of God I, I, I was in college I wouldn't even work on Wednesdays 
You know how you go to college and say, well, they ain't college right now. They ain't college right now. They don't have time to study. Every Wednesday night in college, I was at church. Wasn't that Sister Carruthers? Now, I'm not saying I was always the best person at church, because Sister Carruthers can tell you when we met, sometimes we'd have to go over to the church on campus, and, and, and the preacher preached different. And he, he could preach me right into a coma. <laughs> and the thing about it, he never preached more than 22 minutes. Exactly. 22 minutes. But about the eight-minute mark, I can hear Felicia, I can feel Felicia, wake up. <laughs> I, just, I can't help it. <laughs> I, I had to stop going to church there because I could not wake up while he preached. One of y'all woke up right now and said, I got you. <laughs> I know how you felt. <laughs> but we used to teach our people, nothing is more important than your relationship with God. Coach got angry with me because they had, they had the, they had the uh, ceremony to receive your letter on a Wednesday night. And I said, now, you know, Coach, I won't be there. Where are you going to be, Jeff? I'm going to be at church. You mean to tell me? He said to me. I, I remember this. You mean to tell me that you're going to miss your award ceremony and go to church on a Wednesday night? Yep. And he got angry. He turned, he was one of the, he turned a different color. Because he thought I was playing and I was serious. I want you to understand something. That's junior high and high school. You train a child while he or she is young to put God first. And the reason I am here today is because as I committed to God, God kept me. And God will keep his people. That's what God will do. Kept all of us. And, I, and, and I'm saying Church of Christ members who didn't go the other way. I saw this in an article the other day. It said we, we're having all these ceremonies for those young ladies who made it through high school and college as single mothers. Fine. But every once in a while, congratulate the one who made it through high school with no child. She did something significant too. Recognize the one who made it to, through college and didn't have two or three children. She did something significant too. And we're not telling the other side of the story enough. And all people are getting fed is you have to do like other folk do. Because that's what young folk do. And they need to understand, no, it's not. Every young person does not have to live that way. Every middle-aged adult doesn't have to live a certain way. And every adult doesn't. Especially those who put Jesus first in their lives. And there is a reason Jesus made this statement. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I have not arrived where I need to arrive, arrive as a child of God until God tastes good. Did you hear me? What I'm saying is, until I enjoy God so much, I want to do everything that pleases him first. God's got to taste good to me. Otherwise, I'm just coming to church because that's the thing to do. And that's what others are doing. Jesus said to them, not only to Moses did God speak, but Jesus said to people, because they're concerned about it. What's going to happen if I give myself to God? Jesus says, what's going to happen is there's no person who's left, who's left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels that shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren. What he's saying is you don't lose when you turn your life over to God. You gain. Did you hear me? You don't lose when you make a sacrifice for God. You gain. Now, in this time, Jesus would have us know, is inextricably tied to what happens in the here and now and in the world to come. Now, in this time, orients the child of God to how she and he are to live on earth longer than the 33 years Jesus lived. Now, in this time, strengthens the child of God to face the everyday challenges of life and to remain focused on the God who continues to bring them over.
bring them through and bring them to the victory God is good to us now in this time now in this time does not put off godly living for some other time it does not accept that living holy righteous sanctified redeemed and justified is a mythical vision believed by those who don't have the courage to look behind the curtain and to see who's pulling the strings i'm telling you it's a joy to be a child of god now in this time not in the after a while, not when I get too old, not to dance and shake it like I'm going to break it. <laughs> Amen, somebody. See, you don't want to tell folk I don't, I don't do all that nasty dancing once you can't no more. When you get a certain age and you get two new knees and two new hips, they may tell you you're going to be the same, but you mess around and going to break something. For real, this time. <laughs> don't wait till you can't do it to say, I don't do it anymore. You know, I don't do that. We were in a house one day. We had a church member's house, and we were at the church building. We had a, a senior sister. She was always getting on the young girls. She had a shame to herself. Look at that tight dress on. Look at it, showing on the cleat. I didn't live like that. She was old. She was in her 80s then. And, 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 I, and, I, and I was thinking, I guess you'd, you won't do it now, for real. But then somebody who had come up with her was there. One of her contemporaries said, said to her, let's just call her Ethel. Say, Ethel, you're not doing it now, but I'm going to show some pre the preacher some pictures <laughs> from you when you were that age. And she did. And this same sister that was getting on the young girl was sitting at another church member's house with one of those glasses where you swirl the liquid in it, you know. And her belly was all out her shirt. I said, Sister Ethel. You do stuff different at 88 than you do at 28. Am I right about it? Don't, don't, don't talk about what you won't do once you layer in five layers. Do it while you don't want to hardly anything on. I, I guess this is enough. <laughs> now nah, this time says, I'm all right living for God to the glory of God because I know God is blessing his his children. What he says is you're going to receive a hundredfold more. So let me return to this. As a child of God, your disposition this morning, if you're thinking right, if you're living with God right, as a child of God, you're supposed to be thinking in terms of, I have really been blessed as a child of God. Now I'm not saying that God hasn't done that for you if you're not feeling that way because sometimes we don't count our blessings and name them one by one. What is happening is God's being good to us and we don't even know it. Some of us have lived more uh, years than we should have lived. We've been brought out of places that could have killed us. Some of us have been in situations where it should have been over for us. We don't all the time count our blessings. We don't know how many times we have been confronted by death in the valley of the shadow of death. I'm telling you, God has blessed us beyond our understanding. He says, I'll bless you a hundredfold now in this time and in the world to come, eternal life. And I'm saying this morning, don't wait till you get over there to enjoy God. Enjoy God right now. Give it to God right now and see if your life won't be blessed. Here's what we have an obligation to do. Share the goodness of God with others. Every once in a while, and this is hard in our, in our time, every once in a while, in a Christian's life, God ought to come up. All those folk you work around, the folk you go out with, the folk you eat with, there ought to be some place every once in a while where God comes up. There ought to be, this ought to be the case. Folk ought to know that you're committed to God and religion, not just by what you say, 
but by how you sacrifice. I said how you sacrifice. See, it's very difficult to convince people that you're all in the church if you're with them on a Sunday morning at some affair out there in the world. They'll look at you like you're a cross-eyed hypocrite. If that's so important, why are you here with me right now? I come from a background where Christians change their environment rather than dissolve into the environment. That is, they so live that they change policies and rules because people know they're dedicated to God. I'm not for this weak Christianity that says we've got to do everything the world does. I still believe this is my father's world. And a Christian life can make a difference. But we got to learn to speak up. Talk about God every once in a while. And then talk about why you do what you do. Why you leave your driveway every Sunday morning? Well, you know, I got somewhere to go every Sunday morning. I go and I worship God. Come on, go with me. Let folk know why you do what you do as a child of God. I'm saying we need a better conversation about Jesus. Talk about him, let folk know about him, and then invite them to be a part of the family of God. If you're here this morning and you're not in the church, you're not in Christ, this is what you must understand. Jesus died for the sins of the world, was buried, and rose again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He didn't do it for some of us, he did it for all of us. But all of us will not hear that, some of us will. And I'm encouraging you this morning to be one of the few persons who will hear the gospel news that Jesus died because God loved the world. He was buried and he rose again. Be willing to repent of sin. What I mean by that is turn away from a life without God and turn to a life with God. Confessing Jesus as Lord and then you're buried in baptism where God covers you with the blood of Jesus and washes away all your sins. You're in Christ, you put on Christ and God adds you to the body of Christ, the church. And God never put anybody anywhere in any church except for the church that Jesus was talking about when he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Warning, being in the church is not like being like everybody else. We walk by the dictates, instructions, and teachings of God. And then children of God, you ought to be happy you woke up this morning. Amen. And whatever you've done in the past, any day is a good day to give God more than what you've given him in the past. If you need God this morning in any way, make it known as together we stand and sing an invitation song. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, and come to Jesus just now. And come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now, just now. Cause He will say, Jesus will yes, save you. Yes, He will say, you. He will save you. You just, now. just now, just now, just now, just now, he will he save you. Will save he will save you. He will save you just now. Amen. Once again, we thank God for that outstanding message. Let's give Brother, brother a hand for that message. At this time, we'll give anyone an opportunity if you have anything on your heart to uh, make a statement at this time. I see there is none, but we still want to continue to keep in prayer our country, those things that's going over on overseas, and our service members who have been deployed overseas. So let's go to our God, Father on behalf of those. Father, we continue to thank you for your blessing and you... Uh, that you've bestowed on us, you've been good to us, you've been better to us, and we realize that we've been to ourselves, and we thank you. Now, Father, there are things going on, not only in this country, but abroad, and Father, we're asking you to, if it be your will, that you put a halt to the advancement of one country on another. 
And Father, we have some young men and young women who, who are being deployed overseas. And we, Father, we ask you to bless them, watch over them, and bless them and bring, turn them home to their family safely. And Father, those countries that are being affected, we ask you to be with those people, young, those people that, of those countries, Father. I ask you to protect them, Father. And Father, we thank you for this congregation. We thank you for all you do. This prayer, we ask your son in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Upon the first day of the week, we are instructed to give, and we have come to that part of our worship service where we give. And in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, beginning of verse 6, it tells us and instructs us how to give and the attitude with which we should give. But this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. At this time, we will give you. You all to hold to God's unchanging hand. Why don't you hold to his hand and to my God's unchanging why don't you hold on to it and to God's unchanging name? Ought to be your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. Well, trust in Him who will not leave you. Well, what so ever years may bring we'll live by her late friends for say a God will still more closely to him cling why don't you hold to his hand to my God changing why don't you hold on to it and to God's unchanging hand Be your hopes on things eternal You are to hold on to God's unchanging hand Amen. Let's bow together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come thanking you, Heavenly Father, for your many blessings you've given us, the generosity you've shown us even in our lives. And Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come and give them back, we've done so in a manner that would be pleasing to you, to Heavenly Father. We've done so of a willing spirit, and we've done so cheerfully. Thanking you for your continued blessing in our lives, and these funds may be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom and the spreading of the gospel, and only those things that are according to thy will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Upon the first day of the week, we also participate in the Lord's Supper in the communion, according to Acts 20 and 7. Also, the Lord's Supper was instituted the night in which Jesus was betrayed, as recorded in Matthew uh, chapter 26, beginning at verse 26, where it says, As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this bread which represents thy son's precious body. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come, we take it with the understanding of the significance of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. In also, at this time, we'd like to ask our members to sign your attendance forms and pass those to the two center aisles, and the ushers will uh, take those at this time. Trials talk on every hand, and we cannot understand. Well, all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye, and we'll follow until we die. We will understand it better by and by. Singing by and by, oh, when the morning comes. All of the saints of God in gathering home, we will tell, tell a story of how we overcome. We will understand.
the splendid bell by and by. Temptation here to stand, I often take a son away. And our hearts are made to bleed for a restoreless word or deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best. But we'll understand it better by and by. Singing by, by and by. Oh, when the morning comes, all of the saints. Of oh, God, in gathering no man, we will tell, tell the story of how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. All right, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to assemble safely once again. We thank you, Father, for the teaching and preaching that took place on today. Father, as we depart the assembly, Father, we ask that you help us to share the good news of Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Amen. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, also, while I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and pray for the food. Father, we thank you so much, Father, for providing food for us to eat and the means to afford food. Father, we ask that you bless the hands that prepared it. And as we eat, Father, we give you thanks for all that you do for us. And in this Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All praise and glory be to God. We've had a wonderful worship service, so we thank him for the opportunity to gather around his throne. If we have any visitors in our audience, we would love for you to stand so we can acknowledge your presence and thank God for you being with us today. Are there any visitors on my right? Any visitors? And members, if you brought someone or know someone is visiting, please help them to stand and be acknowledged. Brother Foster, we have a guest of uh, brother, invited by Brother Clarence Harrison. My brother, you want to stand, give us your name, and uh, but he's a guest of Brother Clarence Harrison. Amen. Just, uh, brother Harrison invited him to come and be with us. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Anything you want to say to us, sir? A couple of words or so. Well, thank you for coming, and we pray that you'll come and be back with us again. Anyone in the center out? Yes. Thank you. Anything that you all would like to say? Any word or two you'd like to say? Well, we're thankful you come into being with us and hope you'll come back and be with us again. And anyone on my left? If not, we want you to know you are our honored guest. Please come back and be with us the next opportunity that you have. Any final destruction for our ministry? Yo, the uh, pig feet is here. Ham is here. Other high cholesterol, heart, high heart rate foods <laughs> are here only for today, only for uh, today. Brother Gadsden was here earlier this morning, brought the pig feet in and, and things of that nature. And, uh, and uh, remember that in the back there's one line that where well, the servers will be, and then there's a second line that has gloves. Before you handle any of the utensils, put your gloves on. Make sure you have, have your mask on uh, as well. And then there are enough tables out there for everybody to social distance. We want to, want to keep everybody, everybody safe because you know what will happen if somebody gets COVID at a church building. So let's keep everybody, everybody safe. By now, you should have had two, three, four shots. And uh, uh, things, uh, th things ought to be all right. But uh, this year, we're going to be recognizing Sister Thompson for the several years. This is the program. Everybody will get a program. The program has a few words. Uh, about her and uh, a picture of her in the program. We'll give this to you uh, in the back. We just want you to share about an hour or so with us. Members are going to be able to say what the African American Heritage Program has meant to them. You only have one minute, two minutes. We're not asking you uh, to talk about her whole life. We're asking what has the African American Program meant to you that Sister Thompson has brought our, our way. So please join us for that. Any, anybody's welcome uh, to come and to be a part of that. We want to thank 
those who've worked with Sister Thompson uh, thus far. I understand Sister, Sister Gadsden, Sister Evans helped her decorate uh, earlier this week. And uh, Brother Gadsden, too, he's he been at the building just about every day. I think he's looking for a check now. He's, a, <laughs> <laughs> he's doing something all week long. Uh, uh, in addition, the, those who are in the kitchen, all of you who have brought food uh, this week, we are thankful to you uh, for that. And we'll say a few more things about others uh, as we get to the rear building. So, again, have, have a great day. Come join us uh, in the uh, rear of the, uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, the Doolin Fellowship Hall, and let's uh, thank God and thank Sister Thompson for the work she's done. At this time, consider yourselves dismissed. <laughs>